Look, I get it. You're an incredible photographer. You've taken beautiful images and now all you gotta do is put them in Lightroom, establish a little mood and get out of there. So while you're in there for a little bit, why not go over what the color tools can do and understand how powerful they are? That's why I'm here. My name is Andre LaRoe. I'm a Brooklyn-based photographer and filmmaker, and I love establishing mood in my images. Here's some of them right now. And I think you can be better than me. So let me give you my tips and tricks, and let's see what you can do. I partnered with the homies at Adobe Lightroom to make this video. I hope you find it helpful. Number one, exposure is not your friend. I might look at this photo and say, you know, it looks a little too bright. Why don't I just go ahead and make it a touch darker? So let's just bring it down, you know, 0.49. Oh, no, it's too dark. Even here might be a little too dark. So when I thought it looked too bright, I actually realized that what I wanted was to make this white shirt have a little more detail. So instead of just moving exposure too bright or too dark, instead, I should isolate what I think is too bright or too dark and work on that. So I can do that by changing my highlights. So now look, I can see the detail in Rafa's shirt, or I could even go over to the masking tool and select my subjects and work from there. But that's a little bit for more for later. So now we made this here. The next thing I wanna point out is that sharpening is not your friend. Notice in this photo, I photographed this with a shallow depth of field. A quick little bonus tip, if you want your metadata or some more things about your image, what lens was used, et cetera, you can tap this eye down here and learn more things. And you'll see I photographed this with a 35 millimeter at 2.8. That means that I had my depth of field super shallow. So you can see that just Rafa's in focus. But sometimes people will go editing and they'll say, well, I want everybody in focus. So I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna go to a sharpening and blow. And I'm just gonna make my sharpening super sharp and like, what could go wrong? It'll be great. Not realizing that now we have really not done the best thing for anyone's skin, even aged them. Similar exposure, what sharpening does is it sharpens every part of the image. If you're looking to get a little texture or a little clarity, I would actually tell you to try a little more of the texture tool with someone's skin tone. So you get a little bit of this detail without it giving us this very mummied look. And clarity works really well, less with skin and more to me with environments. So tip number three, use a geometry tool when we're trying to get things straight. So what do we need to get straight? Let's say you're a beverage photographer, like I was a couple years ago. You photograph this bar and you look at it later and you're like, huh, this isn't straight. What should I do? So maybe in the past we might have been like, well, you know, let's just crop it and Keep moving, like great, you know, we're here. Aha, he he. Still not straight though. So what do we do instead? We go over to crop, we go down to geometry, which we'll pretend was closed, we'll tap this. And now instead we'll just go to guided and we'll tell the image, hey, this is gonna be a straight line. And we need a straight line here vertically and this will be a straight line. There we go. Now we have the bar set in the perspective of the consumer and it looks a little more appetizing. Another tip for you, which I believe is number four, masking. So it can be difficult to mask when we're not masking a person, but the, the AI is incredible. So why don't we just use a brush really quick? What we can do with a brush is we can quickly paint over just this part of the image that we wanna alter. Oh, sorry about that, made that a little bit bigger than I wanted to. The masking tool allows you to make a precision edit up close and personal. So we're zoomed in, we're working around, doing our thing, and you can tell the parts of the image that are being selected because they have a pinkish hue, which I know is confusing, so because we have a pink drink, but let's just look over here. That's what it looks like to be selected. Now, with just that, I can make that brighter, I can make that just a little darker, I can bring my highlights up a little bit or even down. And then just to make it look a little, more, a little more appetizing, I can bring my saturation up so it's nice and pink. Let's add a little texture. Now as we look at this image, we can see just a little bit pinker, a little more appetizing. Now if we go back to our original edit, 
It's a little dark, so we can actually bring our brightness up, and you'll notice the drink does not lose its texture. So the masking tool, honestly, might be number four in this list, but it might be number one in your heart. It helps you edit precisely. It helps you do what we've wanted to do for a long time, what I've wanted to do for a long time, which is just zoom in on a single image, alter it so it's absolutely perfect. Lightroom has this really cool tool called versions that allows you to make different versions of the same photo. So you can go to your original, you can go to different edits. So let's say we go back to original and let's just do a couple fun things. Let's quickly change our presets, you know what I'm saying, give us a little contrast. Our skin looks a little too orange. Let's just, you know, quickly go to color mix, do some, you know, get a little something in there, right? Now I can go back to my versions and I can see my original image, a different final I made, as well as this new kind of colorful one, and I can name it Warm. Now we can go to presets. And presets are a really awesome way in Lightroom for you to quickly make an edit. And what's cool is these, these presets allow you to quickly change directly off of this edit. So we already at P, we're at PMO2, we can go to PMO4, we can quickly go through, select them. We can even change, when we click in, the intensity of the edit. Let's go back to the edit we had. And we can see the little sliders that have been changed. How can you tell? In Lightroom, as like a little secret tip, at the very bottom, if something's been changed, there's this little half circle that pops up and shows you what has been changed. The vignette, in color, you can slide through here. If I want to go ahead and isolate a color and make an edit with it, I can quickly go in and go to color mix. And let's say behind me, with this green, it looks very lush, but I'd like it to look a little brighter. So I'm gonna go ahead in the color mix and you know slide a little bit this way and make them, make the greens a little bit, instead of being this blue, make them a little bit warmer, a little more yellow. Then I'm gonna increase the saturation and the luminance a little bit. So now we can see our before and after, we can look at what the green looks like. We can get just a little bit of a warmer image that really works with this idea of like a summer fit, a blazer over a t-shirt, et cetera. It's very easy to switch between black and white color right here in the color tab. But if you want to, you can go over to Profiles and select various black and white profiles that are right there and available to you. Unlike presets, these don't change any of your sliders. It gives you a new base to edit from. But they're easily accessible, you can change the intensity, and you can get going from them. Our final three do's and don'ts are about our management and editing process. So over here on the left sidebar, you're gonna see I have all of these folders. Lightroom's really cool because it allows you to organize your images as well as edit them kind of like Camera Raw in Photoshop and Adobe Bridge. So what I do is every year I make a folder for the year, 2019, 2023, now I'm just naming years. You can see that I have a naming system that's month, day, year, underscore client. I can go back, I can see which photos I edited, I can scroll through them, it's fantastic. But the important thing is the images are, are organized. I have these organized in a way that's easy for me to navigate. If you have many sets of images, I would say more than 10, make sure that you have a folder that differentiates them. I would say once you photograph more than five or six projects, start to organize them in albums. That way you can quickly click in and say, oh, where's the photo from 2023? Being able to quickly reference these will make your editing process easier. Don't just have them laying loose. You can always go back and go to all photos and see every photo you've taken. Lightroom is a non-destructive editor. That means no matter what you do in the edit, you can work through and basically do anything. And it will always be able to go back to where it was. You don't have to export and then import and then export and then import, uh, put all these things all over the place. All of your changes will sit on the file and you can use something called versions to keep everything organized. If you go to versions, you'll see that there's an original version here and we can create a new version. So let's say we wanted to put it in black and white because we need to put it in a newspaper. So let's go to our profile, make it black and white, great. Then we go to versions, create this version, call it black and white, create. And then now I have an original, which we're used to, and then a black and white. It even marks when I did it on my desktop, or remember that Lightroom is something you can use on your phone, on your tablet, and your PC. And that goes right into tip eight, where I can just hit this little share button and I can export any size that I need to. I can do a custom size setting, I can make it a TIFF file, a JPEG, I can make it a DNG, or just the original plus settings. So when I'm ready, 
I can go to my JPEG. I can even make it a smaller size. Sometimes for web, if I want to make it 1500, I can even include a watermark on top if I'd like to, and then hit export. And the file that you get is a copy of this original file. So you can go back and change it whenever you'd like, or you can export a version that's this original color, or this black and white. And that goes all the way to tip nine. Now, it might seem like there's 10, and there are. But a do and don't with Lightroom, and I see people doing this sometimes, is do not delete the images when you're done editing them. As long as you have space, please keep your files so that you can work through them again in the future if you need to, and you can keep the largest copy. And when I said, please don't delete them, I forgot to mention one thing. Lightroom now allows you to store things in the cloud and on local storage. So later, if you decide, you know what? I'm done with these files. I'd like to keep them on this computer. That way I can keep my um, cloud storage clear. I can simply move them over and move them back. The ability for you to edit on the go with the Lightroom Cloud and have access to all of your library is still there. But if for some reason you're running low on storage, you can move it to a local computer and work from there. And lastly, number 10, the most important one, exhale. Versions I showed you, you can make different edits of an image, but the real value of versions is allows you to be indecisive. You can finish an edit. You can work through some things you're interested in, and then you could export it, come back, and still work on something else. A non-destructive, powerful editor like Lightroom is your tool as a photographer to get exactly what you need at that time, and you can revisit it again in the future. Final, final tip, tip 11, our bonus one, is that you can always go over and go to the community tab and look at edits from other folks, save their presets, or go to learn and learn alongside professional photographers that show you how they use the app themselves. Sharing these tips with you is really exciting for me to give you more capacity as an editor. But I think it's more important that we enjoy the fact that we're all forever students. I'm excited to see what you make, and if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Until next time.